All right, y'all, we've reached the final stop on the road to the Kentucky Derby in Lexington at Keeneland. We've got the Lexington Stakes. Now, um, while this isn't worth too much, it's only 20 points to the winner, um, it is a Derby qualifying race. It's 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 meant to be that race to kind of sneak in if you got some points, but you, you don't really have enough um, to get in. You can sneak in. With the win here, horses like uh, the Five Hades are trying to do just that. Um, but the horse does, the, the race does produce some um, decent horses. Last Derby winners was Charismatic, who's also the record holder, ran it at 141. Um, that was in 1999. Charismatic got uh, the win here before going on to be a, a near miss uh, for the Triple Crown. Um, won the Derby in Preakness and then. Uh, broke his leg in the Belmont uh, rough loss uh, also Risen Star uh, 1988 Derby winner came out of this race so uh, looking at this year's um, this year's field I don't know necessarily that I see a, a, a potential Derby winner of course any horse that comes out of the gate is a potential winner um, but it's really tough I there's something I like in all these horses, and there's something I think is wrong with all these horses. So just let's just get into it here. Number one, Secret Chat. This one's out of Union Rags, Florida bred, which and that's another thing with this. Most of these horses aren't bred in Kentucky. Um, a lot of breeding from all over. This one's a Florida bred. Got him at 15 to 1. Joel Rosario riding him. He's never ridden him before. Um... So it is an upgrade, you in my opinion, on the jockey. Last out was a second place at Gulfstream. A lot of horses coming up from Gulfstream um, to run in this one. Uh, that was a six furlonger, uh, second by two, 110. Before that, he was second in the Aventura, mile and 137, and he broke his maiden at Gulfstream, uh, a six and a half or uh, 118. Some good workouts coming into this one. A uh, minute breezing, uh, a 48 breezing from the gate, and a 48 before that. So I, that's something I do like about this horse. Um, he had some decent uh, races coming up to this. Nothing quite this long, but this race is only a mile and 116th. Not the mile and eighth like most of the other prep races. Uh, so will we be able to handle it? Um, I think it looks pretty good for him as far as that goes. Uh is a competitive race though. Number two, the wine steward. This one's a weak favorite. They got him at five to two. That's weak in my opinion. Um, he may not go off as the favorite. Horses out of Vino Rosso, uh, curling horse, of course. New York breeding on this one. Uh, good career so far. Uh, four races, three wins, uh, one second place running. Luis Saez riding him. Uh, he rode him. Um, Last out, uh, second by half a length in the Breeders' Cup Futurity at Lexington. Um, all right, sorry. Um, and a win and a maiden special weight at Belmont. So you can see why he's favored. Um, the thing I don't like about him is these times weren't any good. He didn't really run any that impressive times in any of these races. So, uh, of course, likes to win, likes to be competitive. We'll see if he got the speed, though. Uh, a 101 breezing coming into this, which is eh, but a 59 breezing before that at five furlongs. Uh, so I mean, that's a good time. Uh, he's gonna have to have that sort of a running speed, uh, definitely. I think in this one, I think this is gonna be the most competitive race that any of these horses has raced in, in their career. Uh, let me just put it that way. Uh, number three. Dilger, an interesting horse, Irish bred, Lope de Ve uh, Vega, uh, sire of this one. Twelve to one in the morning odds. Odds. Uh, Tyler Gaffleone, who's having a good good uh, year, twenty eight percent win percentage at um, Keeneland so far this meet. So a good meet he's having. Uh, this horse, not too much to say except he just had a good win um, in a maiden. Coming from Gulfstream as well, had a couple of losses before that at a mile, uh, or one at a mile, one, um, I think it was a sprint before that, I think it was a sixer. Um, 
Last out, though, was a decent win. It was a good race. Uh, pace wasn't too fast. It was a respectable pace. Tyler Gaffney hopped aboard him, and then got the win at a mile and 136. Decent time. Um, so Gaffney back on him, trying to repeat here. Uh, you like to see that a jockey hit, has a win on a horse previously. Um, that's, that's a sign of chemistry. Chemistry in sports is everything. Um, it's not everything, everything. Uh, but you got to have good chemistry. Bad chemistry can ruin talent. Um, it can ruin the, the ability. It can, it's, it's set up everything. Uh, bad chemistry can ruin everything. So good chemistry is what you want to see. He's shown it on this horse. Uh, I don't like that he's coming off a maiden. It's not usually good for a horse to come directly off a maiden and go to a stakes race. Um, this doesn't historically work well. Number four, footprint. Horse is out of dial then. 10 to 1 in the morning odds. BJ Hernandez riding him. Uh, second in the rush away is last out. Uh, artificial surface there. Julian Le Perot was riding him there, though. Uh, BJ Hernandez rode him in the race before that. Uh, third in that one, a length off of a, a mile and 144 on dirt. The last out in the rush away was on artificial surface. Another 144. Um, second by a neck in that one, but you liked that he ran well in his last race. Uh, didn't have as good of a race on dirt before that. And, um, these are these times just not, not what you want to see. I want to see faster times. Um, these horses, these races where the horse was, uh, stressed out to win by a neck. I mean, if you're Winning by a neck, you're battling for a win. You're usually getting the most out of your horse. If that's the most he's got, I don't know if that's going to be enough for this race. Um, just don't know. Number five, Hades. An interesting horse. I think the most interesting horse out of this thing uh, about this horse is that he um, he got a win over. I don't know that that um, uh, Sierra Leone. He should be the favorite in my opinion. Um, Hades beat fierceness in the holy bowl uh that was a slow race they walked around the track for the uh opening quarter or um opening half 50 seconds that's too slow 146 in the uh mile one sixteenth. very slow this race isn't going to come up that slow i can almost guarantee that um so he stole that race Came back in the Florida Derby. He was fifth place, 19 lengths off. That's not really representative of how good the horse is. Just representative of the fact that Fierceness wasn't having it this time and blew him away. Uh, I think Velasquez was upset about that, as was Todd Pletcher. Wanted to get some revenge, prove that Fierceness was better. Uh, being that he, uh, Breeders' Cup juvenile winner, uh, got need a strong win going to the Kentucky Derby. He got that. Uh, Hades was kind of the victim of that. Um, so now he needs to come back and prove that he's got something. And he's a good horse. He's a good horse. Good career so far. Um, hasn't really shown the time. Much with a lot of these other, other horses, uh, like I said, with Footprint and some of the others. Uh, Wine Stewart hasn't shown the time that I would want to see to make him look that strong. Um, so I think he's going to have his work cut out for him. They got him at 7-2 to two morning odds. I'm pretty sure that's going down. Jose Ortiz is riding him. Horse is out of awesome slew. So that's an awesome, again, horse. Quality road on the other side of the tree. So I think the public will be on this horse. I think some of the big money is going to be on this horse. And I expect those odds to come down. He may even be the favorite, dare I say, at post time. Number six, how's your attitude? 30 to 1, Adam Bestiza riding this one, a street sense horse. Um, horse, another one just coming off of his maiden. Um, same as uh, Dilger. Mile and 138 in that uh, maiden. A uh, couple maidens before that, maiden special weight. Third in both of those. Um, one length off, six and a half furlongs, one and one eighteen, one and one seventeen. So not amazing times. Uh, then he got a, the the win of the mile in one thirty eight. Not an amazing time again. Now he's stepping it up. Um, 
coming to a stakes race against horses that have a lot to race for, uh, I think they got them at 31 for a reason. It, it might That might be kind of, yeah, that's probably about right. Might be kind of rough, I said, coming off a win like that, but it is a maiden win, not very strong. And um, tough competition. Number seven, ever do it. Um, Florida bred horse here. Jin D. Of successful appeal. Sorry, this horse. Uh, Axel Conception riding him. Another one they got at 30 to 1. Uh, third last out in the sophomore stakes. A seven furlonger. Uh, she was two lengths off at 123. Before they got a win, um, optional cr- claimer. Uh, a mile and four yards and 140. Huh. You know, and he ran the Tampa Bay Derby before that, eighth by 13. That's going to be bigger than 31, I'm pretty sure. Uh, this horse has a lot um, going against him. Um, I don't have him rated that slow, though. I do think that he's posi- he will be positioned. Um, he probably will be positioned pretty well, I think. Don't know if he'll have the speed. Uh to be able to get it done, though, uh, he's going to have to show some um, show some uh, some heart and resilience that I don't think he's shown in the past. Number eight, Encino, thirty to one. I don't think so. That's got to come down. Horses out in him. Won the John Patag- Pataglia his last out. Uh, another race in Kentucky. On artificial, though, unfortunately, all this horse uh, horses races have been on artificial service. That's something to not like. The thing to like is he's been competitive. Got two wins and a loss by a neck. Uh, mile and 139. Um, broke the maiden. Uh, mile and 116 to 146. Two slow times. All right, John Battaglia was 144. Stepped up a little bit there. Still think this race is going to come off faster than 144. Um I just have a feeling that, that it's, it's going to come off faster than that because all these horses uh, that have shown they can run that 144 uh, are going to be chasing it. So, he's got his work cut out for him. We'll see how he translates over to the dirt. Number nine, Liberal Arts, Arrowgate, Horse. I had Ortiz Jr. jumping on this horse. Now, you got to like that. I don't like the horse's speed, though. Six in the Arkansas Derby. Ten lengths off behind Muth. Not that good. Tyler Gaffleone was riding him. Not riding him today. Gaffleone is on Dilger. Uh, so, they got I read Ortiz Jr. Uh, you know, I, I, technically, I think I read Ortiz Jr. is better than Gaffleone. But I don't know if we'll be enough to get this horse through. They got him at four to one. I don't really, I mean, uh, I think that's kind of more of a hype thing as far as those odds. I don't think that's going to hold. Probably going to go up. Um, before that, Arkansas Derby, third in the Southwest Stakes. Then you got to win before that in Street Sense. Just not enough resume wise for me to really like this horse. Switching up to Irad Ortiz Jr. to me is not enough to really like him. It's, it's just not enough. And I know a lot of other people will be liking him. I think that's kind of because of the familiarity with the stakes races. I mean, you got the street sense, you got the uh, Southwest Stakes, you got the Arkansas Derby, but he didn't do anything. Didn't do anything in those races. Um, that street sense win uh, was uh, mile and one sixteenth, one forty six. It was slow. It was in the slop, but it was still slow. Um, I think the horse is going to be outmatched. Number ten, Lucky Jeremy, eight to one, Geraldo Corrales. Gerardo Corrales, Rico Suave Corrales, riding him. Horses out of looking at Lucky. Uh, Corrales is 21% win percentage uh, on the meet, so you got to like that. Um, Good works for the horse Uh, coming into this one. Going to want to probably be running up front. Uh, So you want to see him working out well as far as that, but he hasn't done much in his last few outs. Fifth by four in the Jeff Ruby. I mean, that was artificial, but you got to do better than that. Third in the Sunland Derby. Uh, got a win before that. Um, 
That was in the R. Allison uh, mile in 136. Uh, so, a good time there. Um, hasn't done anything like that in a while. So, uh, you got Corrales back riding him now. Corrales did have a win on him, broken freaking his maiden. Uh, the horse is going to need to get that form back together that he broke this, uh, uh, that he, he got this win in Sunland, um, Sunland Park. Don't know if it's really going to favor him being up front, though, unless he really runs away with it. Um, and I'm not sure that he's going to be aggressive enough to do that. Um, I've got um, the number six taking the lead in this one. Uh, how's your attitude? I think he goes out, gets the lead. I think he will be challenged by Hades, who likes to run up front. And he'll be challenged by a lucky Jerry, who likes to run up front as well. So I'm looking at that opening half in the 46 second range. Um, I think Everdust, the seven, and uh, the number eight Encino will be in there. I think they will be decently close to that pace. Um, but I think that pace is going to be to the detriment of all those horses. I don't think they're really built to uh, open up 46 seconds um, at four furlongs. And I think it will hurt them. I think we're going to look for winners, uh, a winner coming off the pace. Um, something to like about a lot of these horses and something to not like. And even though I do not like that this horse is coming off a maiden win, I do think that Dilger is the best horse. Um, I think he's going to have the best positioning. Um, maybe not necessarily the best horse in every race, but I do think this will favor him. And I've got Dilger for the win. Tyler Gaffleon. Um, I like what he's been doing at the track. Uh, I like the horse's form as of late, and I'm looking for it to carry over. Even though it doesn't, I think the competition's going to be a step behind him. I got the one. Um, Secret Chat, Joe Rosario, running second. Um, I'm going with the uh, five, Hades, uh, with uh, Jose Ortiz in third place, and the favorite, the wine steward, Luis Saez, running fourth. Um, I usually do not do this, as you all know. Um, I'm usually not one to pick a lot of long shots. I got Dilger here at 12 to 1, and then the second choice secret chat of 15 to 1. Uh, I had to I had to end up going with it as I see it. This was a tough call. Um, I think that uh, the pace will end up hurting these front runners. Uh, unless uh, maybe Hades shows more and runs away with it, or maybe uh, Lucky Jeremy gets away from the pack and they don't challenge him too much. I don't think that's going to ha happen. I think it's going to be too competitive. I think the winner's coming from off the pace. I look at the jockeys. I look at the horses. And uh, I just got Dilger. Um, so please let me know what you think in the comments section. Um, thank you for watching. I will see you all after the race. And uh, once again, that's a 3-1-5-2 for the win.